I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the United States national team career where before we get into anything in the game I have to take a second and apologize last time out the debut episode of this series I made a big mistake I said that the United States national team finished third in the latest gold cup obviously they did not most of you knew that for some reason I just thought I got it in my head that they finished third and I guess I should have just stat checked all of my my facts before I put that episode out but yeah, they did. They finished fourth, so I do apologize for that. It doesn't affect anything we're doing in the game. It just makes everything so much worse for the U.S. national team in real life. I mean, it's just... They're in a bad run right now. They, they need to turn things around, but... Let's get back into the game where today we will be finishing off the group stage of the South America Cup. We're starting off with a game against Brazil. A team that I think I've only ever beaten one time. But if we can get something against them, at the very least a draw, hopefully... It would really set us up nicely to make it into the knockout stages. So, let's get into this thing. Our second ever game with this team. And we got to go against Brazil. That's going to be tough. But, let's do this. So, here is the lineup we're going to go with against Brazil. And I've only made one change from the last game. And we're going to bring Fabian Johnson in there to start in the left midfield spot in place of Zardes. Just wasn't feeling Zardes. He just didn't give me very much over there. So, I'm going to give Fabian Johnson a shot. If it turns out that the pace is just too much for Robbie Rogers to handle in the left back spot, I'll drop Johnson back and bring Zardes back into the midfield. But for now, this is what we're going to start off with. And here is the lineup Brazil is trotting out there against us. And oh my god, that's a good lineup. Pato, Neymar, Hulk, Firmino, Gustavo, Teixeira, Sandro Silva, Luis, Danilo, and Danny Alves in goal. Wow. Danny Alves? I say Danny Alves in goal. It's Diego Alves. Sorry. All right, here we go. Kick off once more at CenturyLink Field. I don't know why we get to keep playing here, but I will absolutely take it. I love playing in this stadium. Fabian, Fabian, just hold that up. Oh, man, whoever that was just blew right by me. Fabian Johnson already looking very lively. Keep going, Fabian. I, maybe I should have taken a shot there. Should I have taken a shot there? Nope, lay it off. It's Yedlin. Yedlin brought down in the penalty spot. Yes, that's a penalty. DeAndre Yedlin. Oh my god. We can get an early goal against Brazil. I don't know what they were doing. They they felt like they were I felt like they were asleep for that first possession. Fabian Johnson made a great run, and then Yedlin just I wasn't doing anything special. I just he just took me down for no reason. Alright. Clint Dempsey's gonna step over this one. Come on, Deuce. Put this thing away. Dempsey does, and it's 1-0 over Brazil. That's a flying start. They haven't touched the ball. We're up 1-0. How? No. No, we're in trouble. Oh, he's offside. He, wow. How did he miss that? Pato dead in front of goal missed it. I think he was offside anyway, but how did he miss? He, was, he wasn't even offside. He just flat missed. Oh, we caught a break there. No, 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 no. Yes, Fabian Johnson again coming in clutch. Bradley, that was a horrible touch. No! Yes, Tim Howard. Oh, man. We are sloppy right now with the back. We've got to tighten this up. They're getting way too many shots. They're too good to give that many opportunities to. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Help. Help, Fabian. Hulk with it. Oh, God. <laughs> They've had so many shots in the end of this first half. I'm just trying to get to halftime with the lead. This is getting terrifying. That'll work. That was a lucky bounce, but we'll take it. Yedlin, can you keep it in play? Yedlin does! He does fantastic! Play it in there! It's Altador! Off the post! No way! That was a brilliant play from Yedlin! Alright, with 30 minutes left, we're making a sub. We're gonna bring Altador off, bring Will Trap on, and move Dempsey up top. It's time to get a little bit more defensive. Now, did, what did Darlington Nagby just do? Oh my god, the skill passing. No, the skill passing from everyone on the Brazilian team is terrifying. Good How do you get the ball right back? No! Oh! Damn it, I hate that when you make the, a good tackle, it just ends up right back at their feet. That almost killed us. Alright, we're going to make our final substitutions now with less than 10 minutes less, uh, left. Omar Gonzalez is going to come in. Cameron's going to move up to the CDM spot. Zardes is going to come in for Nagby, who's just too tired right now. Oh, I missed the tackle. I missed the tackle. Here comes Brazil. Not in stoppage time. That was an awful play. Brooks, get rid. No, I couldn't get rid of the ball. Get rid. Yes. Brooks gets it out. 
There is a final whistle. Another win for this team. A 1-0 win on a cheap penalty that Brazil honestly didn't need to give away. It was early in the game. They just... I don't know what happened to them, but I'll take it. I will take it. So here are the player ratings from that game. Man of the match actually went to Diego Alves, the goalkeeper for Brazil. Absolutely 100% agree with that. If it wasn't for him, we would have destroyed them. I mean, we really found our footing in that second half. We ended up having 14 shots in the game after we only had two at halftime. So second half, we owned it. I was very happy with that performance. Fabian Johnson definitely was a good upgrade on that left side over Zardes, but... The team overall played very, very well. We really should have scored more than one goal, but we got the win nonetheless. So that win over Brazil actually guarantees us a spot now in the knockout stages of this tournament with one game left to play in the group. We're definitely going to rest some players, get some other players in there. I mean, right now we're still experimenting with who we want on this team. So this is a good opportunity to try to try out some different players. Um, we can't fall any farther than second place with one game left. So let's get into this last game against Peru and see how we can do. So here is the new lineup and the new formation we're going to go with against Peru. It's going to be Johansson and Zardes up top. Nagby's going to slide into the center attacking mid spot. I just want to test him out in there, see what he can give us. Bedoya and Disgrude are also now in the midfield. And Jeff Cameron's going to slide up from the center or the center back spot to play center defensive midfield. Um, it's going to be Viafania, Miazga, Beasler, and Chandler across the back with Bill Hamid in goal. I'm not sure how the narrow diamond formation is going to work. I know, I feel like in FIFA 16, utilizing the width of the field is very important. Not sure if this is going to allow us to do that, but I just want to change things up and see what this can give us. So here is what the Peru lineup looks like for this one. And I don't know many Peruvian players, but the ones I do know are in there. They do have Carrillo, they have Jefferson Farfan, Zambrano in the back. It's a very decent lineup. They did manage to draw against Colombia, so they are bringing something to the table. So here we go, kickoff, and this is actually our first away match of this career. We're not at CenturyLink Field, we're at the Odromo, whatever that is, but Zardes already picking off the pass, takes a big touch, we chip that, not really, and it's punched, that was interesting, Farfan, you are not that good Farfan, there you go Miazga, play it over here, very nice, play it through, yes he finds Nagby, Nagby, Play it. Yes. Nagby, find that shot. No, it's going to fall right to... Zardes, finish! Zardes! What are you doing, man? And over here, yes. Look at all the space. Come on, Nagby. Keep it going. I miss Zardes, but we're going to pull it back in the middle. Nice. One more. It's Jeff Cameron. Jeff Cameron fires! That was not a bad shot, but it was a very, very good save. Mix turns. Mix gets a shot off. Mix Discord hits the post. And Zardes' follow-up goes over. How have we not scored a goal? We're dominating this game. We've got to get a goal at some point. How in the hell? These one-touch passing. This is bullshit. No far fan is away. I can't catch up to him. Miazga. And that's going to... Oh, he hit it off the side netting. That was Peru's first real chance. It came 40 minutes in. And it was just a bunch of one-touch passes that... Honestly, I couldn't do anything about. That was ridiculous. Farfan again. Farfan. Great play from Miazga. He springs us. Look at all the space out here for Zardes. Come on, Zardes. You got to put this one away. Giassi Zardes. What was that shot? Are you, are you kidding? That was one of the worst shots I've ever seen. You got to be taking the piss, Zardes. That was awful. And that's the whistle for halftime. How? How did he take that shot? That was so bad. All right, at halftime, we're going to make one change. Nagby's coming out just because he is tired. He's played every single game. Will Trap's going to come in, and we're going to move Adoya up to the center attacking mid spot. There we go. Find that. To the top of the box. It's mixed. That is not the shot I wanted. Why do I keep taking that bicycle kick shot from the top of the box? It's almost worked twice, though. Look at that shot from Discrew. It was looping into the top corner. Galise had to actually put a glove on that walk there we go we're in come on yes nice ball can we find that ball back post to Giassi Zardes we can and it's Zardes with the header we finally scored our goal and that was a great quick counter attack and a perfect ball in I don't know who played that cross but it was pinpoint accurate a corner let's just try to put one in the box I haven't done that yet I see Zardes in there I tried to pick him out Miazga, the youngster, comes through and powers that header 
into the back of the net, and it's 2 nothing. Maybe I should try some more actual crosses from corners. That was perfect. The delivery from Discarude was right where I wanted it. I wanted it to Zardes, who was standing there, but Miyazga, out of nowhere, rises above everyone else and puts it home 2-0 over Peru. There is the final whistle, a third straight victory for this team, and a very, very impressive one. This team played so well. I mean, we absolutely destroyed Peru. Like, it wasn't even a contest. We had so many shots. It's a shame we only scored two of them, but still a dominant performance in this one. So here are the player ratings from that one. And man of the match actually went to the opposing goalkeeper, Galise. He played a 9.3. Somehow made 14 saves, even though we didn't even have 14 shots. I'm not sure how that happened, but he played pretty well. I'd say the saves he had to make, though, weren't all that impressive. We took a lot of shots that ended up right at him. So I was disappointed with our finishing in particular, but... I'd give my man of the match either to Jeff Cameron or Matt Miazga. Both of them were very, very good. Miazga got himself a goal in his debut for me. He was very impressive. He was definitely the better of the two center backs, I would say, between him and Beasler. But Jeff Cameron probably was just a little bit better, and it showed in his ratings. He was very good. Very solid in the midfield. So before we get into the final game of this episode, I just want to take a minute or two to address something that I talked briefly about in my video I released a couple of days ago talking about the national team career mode situation in FIFA and that is there's no way to hold any training camps for your national team to progress some of the younger players that you would have in available to you for the national team so what I've decided to do in place of that is I'm gonna buy two players per season in my club career and I'm gonna use training on them for one full year um, to try to progress them a little bit and for each of those two players I'm allowing myself one bronze one silver and one gold training per session per week so as you can see the two players i brought in for this year are going to be rubio rubin and ben swanson i'm using two training sessions this time on rubio rubin so he has a bronze and a silver swanson's getting three training sessions so he has the full bronze silver and gold training sessions hopefully this works and at the end of this year-long cycle i will then ask your guys's opinion on two players you want me to bring in for the next year-long cycle if you want to stick with both of these players that's fine if you want to swap one out for someone else that's also fine however you want to do it but i'll ask your opinion for two players that you want me to bring in i'm going to do my best to balance this system that i'm going to try to put in place here and not progress these players too much too quickly obviously making them um just beasts too fast i don't want that to happen i want them to come along nice and easy to play themselves into a spot on the national team so i'm um, like i said hopefully this works out i'll tweak it if i need to but this is the system i'm going to put in place so here's a look now at the table for the south america cup we are into the quarterfinals the knockout stages and the teams that have made it out of the group play are argentina and paraguay uh venezuela and brazil uruguay and ecuador united states and chile we have chile in the in the quarterfinal that is a very very tough matchup for us Chile finished second in their group. We finished top. I really wish we could have gotten one of those third place teams, which were either Paraguay or Ecuador. Instead, we got Chile. That, that's tough. That's very, very tough. But we're playing well right now. I, I really think we have a chance in this one. So let's see what we can do. So here is the lineup we're going to go with. We're back to the original 4-4-1-1 formation. The 4-4-2 was okay. That narrow diamond formation did very, very well against Peru. But this allows us to get our better team on the field, better players out there overall. So... We're going to stick with this, I think, for the remainder of this tournament, unless we're forced into making some change through injury or something. So, I like this formation. I like this team. Let's see what we can do against Chile. Here is what Chile is putting out there against us in this quarterfinal. And it's a good team. I don't know about Castillo up top. That's an interesting one. I don't even really know who that is, but... The rest of the team is pretty decent. It's, it's going to be a tough one. So here we go. Kick off. And once more, we're back at CenturyLink Field for it. I like that. I like playing here. You know I do. So let's see if we can't get a win against a very strong Chilean team that I'm actually a little bit worried about. They're actually... I always have problems with them. The pass off. Very nice. Bradley. Very nicely done. Get that ball up there to Altador. There you go, Altador. Josie. Play it. That wasn't where I wanted it to do, but Nagy finds space on the edge of the box. He just missed it. That was a really good find from Altador. Not where I wanted it to go. I was trying to get to Dempsey, but Nagy just couldn't quite get his foot all the way around it. I didn't think Fabian Johnson doesn't even have three-star skills, but he got around that guy. Give it up to Dempsey. Dempsey flicks it 
gets inside. Clint Dempsey, find that shot. Oh my god, it's I can't get the shots into the corner. The shots, my finishing has been atrocious in this in this episode. There's a whistle for halftime. We dominated possession in this game. We've absolutely held the ball forever, but they're blocking every pass. Every cross, every shot, every time we get the ball in the attacking third, everything's blocked. I can't get any shots off. It's really frustrating. All right, starting the second half, they've made a change. They've gone with a different striker, it looks like. Canales is coming on for Castillo, I think it was, but I don't know how that's going to help them. They haven't gotten the ball to their striker yet. I mean, we were killing them in the midfield and in the attacking end. Uh-oh. This is bad. Are you kidding me? Tim Howard, how do you let that go through? All of the shots we've had, that's their first shot of the game. It's from a bad angle. It's directly at the goalkeeper. And Tim Howard just lets it go through him. How? That's, uh, that's such bullshit. There's no way. There's no way. There you go. Get that ball through. Out the door. You better not screw this up, out the door. He hit the post again. There's a fin... What was that shot? From Failhaber. He just absolutely P-rolled it at the keeper. Why? Oh my god, what happened? Oh god. Alexis. Okay. Fair play. That was a great play from Alexis Sanchez. That's a world-class player absolutely doing my entire defense dirty. I have no problem with that one. That was that was a sick move. He just skirted by Yedlin, and the finish was top class. I have no problem giving up that goal. But that really puts us behind the eight ball now. I mean, it shouldn't be 2-0. That should be 1-0 at the most. All right. So after that goal, we're going to make our substitutions. We're going to try to go a little more offensive with a 4-3-3 attack formation. But Doya, Zardes, and Disgrude are going to join in. I'm moving um, Fabian Johnson back to left back and replacing Robbie Rogers. No real reason for that other than uh, Fabian Johnson's just a little bit better. I just wanted to keep him on the field. But we'll see how this goes. We've got thirty, a little less than 30 minutes to make a comeback here. We need two goals. Go ahead. Oh, Nagby, you came short. I wanted you to go long. Nagby got the ball back. Go, Nagby. You've got the pace. Put the ball across. There's a man. That's one back. It's Clint Dempsey from Darlington, Nagby. The Timber and the Sounder link up. It's a bit awkward, I know, but I will take it. It's 2-1. We still have a shot in this one. Nagby with a great play to get that ball back. He, he didn't make the run I wanted him to. But he ended up making it work anyway, and Dempsey, that was a really, really good finish. A tough one, too. That was awesome. There you go. Hold that, Dempsey. Play that through. That was to the wrong player, but that's okay. It works! There's the shot! No freaking way did we not get that, but Doya had a golden opportunity! We've got one more shot at this thing. Come on, Fabian Johnson. Play. The ref blows the whistle right there. No! We lost this one. 2-1, and you know what? I think, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen enough of Tim Howard. I think it's time for him to retire from the national team. He, he's been awful. He's given up two goals in this tournament that were horrific. You just you can't make those mistakes at this level. I'm sick of watching him play. And it's honestly, I'm just done with him right now. Let me know if that's a decision you think we should make. Because right now, I don't think Tim Howard belongs on this team. So here are the player ratings from that game. Clint Dempsey gets himself man of the match and... In a game that we dominated, never should have lost. Clint Dempsey was the best player on the field. I agree. I give him my man of the match as well. But I know I always rush to conclusions, especially after we lose. And I, and I say things that maybe I shouldn't say, but I'm serious. Tim Howard, he had two dreadful games. The first game against Columbia, he was horrific. This game, he was no better. He didn't make a single save in this game. Not one. And I, I can't blame him for one of the goals. Alexis Sanchez's goal, the second goal they scored, was really, really good. I can't do anything about that. But that first goal, the one that put us behind and we couldn't recover from, was bad. And he he, he gave up two horrific goals in this game in this tournament. You know, maybe it's time to look at Brad Guzan. Maybe it's time to replace Tim Howard in the Stars and Stripes. I just... He was so bad in this tournament. So here are the final results from that tournament. Argentina went on to beat Uruguay in the final 2-1. to one. Oh, man. I, I really I really thought we should have at least made it to the semifinals. Uruguay are a very, very good team. I'm not sure we would have beaten them, but I thought we deserved to beat Chile at least. I, at least draw that game. We missed some opportunities. I don't know. I don't know. I think we could be better. We'll definitely keep getting better as the time goes on, but for now, it's time to start concentrating on some friendlies and start looking at some new players to bring into the team. Alright, so that is going to do it for this one, and our first tournament comes to an end with this with this team. 
We did pretty well. I mean, I don't think it was a failure by any stretch. I would have liked to advance a little bit further. I felt it was there. We just couldn't quite grab hold of it, but we did get through our group stage undefeated. We beat Brazil and we beat Colombia. I think we can come away from this holding our heads high saying it was a pretty successful tournament from us. We had some very good wins in there. But in the coming months now, we will have friendlies to go through. And I kind of want your opinion on how you think I should do the friendlies. I really don't want to do um, live commentate every single friendly match. It would just take too long for this series to, to advance. Um, I will probably simulate some of the ones against lesser teams such as India um, and teams like that that are way down there in the world rankings that I just honestly don't need to play. Um, and I'll show you how the team did via simulation, but I know we also have a couple of games via friendly coming up against Mexico. And I'm obviously going to be playing those ones. Anytime we play Mexico, those are always really, really good games to play. So, that's going to do it for this one. If you had as much fun as I did, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you when we come back with some more national team career. See ya.